And we're coming to you live from the Mill Four Top Studio. Boomer Esiason, Greg Giannotti. It's Boomer and Geo on the fan. Simulcast across the country on CBS Sports Network. And wherever you are in the free Odyssey app, good Thursday morning. Yankees continue to roll. The Mets do win the series against the Twins, of course, but lose yesterday. It is August 1st. We've got the Hall of Fame game. We've got more training camp stuff. Rob Sala, Aaron Rodgers not on the same page, and Brian Cashman here on the radio station asking Brandon Tierney to pee into a cup and get drug tested for his takes on the Yankees. It never stops here at WFAN. No matter what, no matter what month, what day, we roll around here. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, there's a lot of drama around here. We're like the women's gymnastic team. Oh, my God. I mean, everybody's sniping at each other. And I'm like, man, we should be proud. We all should be proud. Well, it's just the one Michaela Skinner who did one YouTube video that she pulled down and apologized for. And she said, I guess she said some things about the team saying that they were outside of Simone Biles. They're lazy and don't have it. I mean, she was very supportive of Simone. I mean, how could you not be? Yeah, right. But and I then, mean, like, yeah, but then everybody has to pile on. Everybody's got to jump in. And then and then the girls who did win the gold medal end up having to react to everybody well, else jumping in. Well, like it gave them extra motivation, I feel like. I feel like she was a catalyst to catalyst. The catalyst to get them going, you know, so it was it was great. But yeah, that's that we do. We always have drama around here, uh, much like uh, the women's shoot. Yes. <laughs> did, did, did uh did Brandon Tierney uh Tell Brian Cashman that he didn't have the right to rebuild uh, the I Yankees. Was, I was I was hoping that he would, but they did not say that. And that would have been a tough thing to say. Like if he if Brian Cashman comes on as a guest you know, with the Yankees playing so well and, and BT is like, you don't have the right to rebuild the Yankees in the way that they need to be rebuilt. Uh, so, no, he didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, but he did say, and the thing that got Brian Cashman, I'm sure that uh, Jerry will have it at, at 625, but the thing that he said that got Brian Cashman very upset was he didn't, BT did not believe that the Yankees were operating with the same type of urgency <laughs> that they have in the past. Urgency. They added Juan Soto before the season started. Yeah. I think I have four guys make, what, three guys making over $30 million a year. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, it, it, it's a lot of urgency. That, and that was Brian Cashman's answer. Now, BT said, well, why'd you wait for Gallo to get rid of him? Why'd you wait for, to get rid of Hicks? All of these things, but, and then, you know, Brian Cashman counters with, we've got an MVP, a Cy Young Award winner, another guy who could be an MVP, you know, and and just talked about how they've invested in the team with, with big names. So, I mean, both of them are right. Like, the Yankees held on to Joey Gallo, Gary Sanchez, Aaron Hicks, and maybe Glaber Torres too long, but Brian Cashman is also right, and Hell, we re-signed Aaron Judge. We brought in Garrett Cole. We brought in Juan Soto. We want to re-sign him. We, we signed Carlos Rodon, even though he stinks for the most part. But we gave him a ton of money. You know, so they're they're both right. But it's just really, how you see, it's just how you see yeah, it. It's, exactly. like, it's, it's like anything else. I mean, yeah. And the other, the other the other interesting thing, yeah, is you know that David Sampson. Now, this is a former president of baseball operations, I guess. Yeah, he is a Stugatz buddy, actually. All and right. the last time that Stugatz, not this this past week, but last year when Stugatz was in here, David Sampson came on the show because I guess he's he's a big he fires a lot of. You know, missiles. fastballs, missiles. missiles, yeah. Well, here you go. Well, I mean, like, you know, missile I say, fire. he hates to, uh, I don't know him from Adam, but everything I read when he does something like what he did yesterday, I I get the sense that he hates Derek Jeter. That yeah, he can't yeah. stand Derek Jeter. I don't know if they, I guess they work together down there at the Marlins. Or so maybe now, uh, David Sampson lost his job because, because of, Derek of Derek Jeter. Because of Derek Jeter. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is, but he hates Derek mm. Jeter. I mean, whatever. With a passion. At least that's how I feel when I read what he says. And, of course, he is throwing cold water all over the Jazz Chisholm signing for the Yankees or trade for the Yankees. And and we're watching, and what we have seen is a guy that's been the energizer bunny since he's gotten here. Yeah. Which is exactly what the Yankees needed. They needed something to shake up the team, somebody to come in and be a little bit, uh, you know, I, I'd like to say uh, – Pee and vinegar, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what he is. Sure. You know, and I'm yeah. using the, when I say P, I say the, the letter. Yeah, right. Of, of, of course. Yes, so, uh, uh, a he, lot of pee talk this morning. Pee and a right, cup, but, pee but, and vinegar. Whatever. But yeah. I do think that, uh, you know, and that's and that's a hot take. 
And that's a guy who's no longer in baseball, mm-hmm. as, as far as I know. Right. And maybe, you know, this this is his way of getting back to people. Like, and by the way, Chisholm wasn't there when he was there. He wasn't? It didn't line up? Uh, no, I think Chisholm came uh, a year after Samson left. Okay. So I, I don't know necessarily. I, I, I'm assuming he is still follows the Marlins and still, you know, is very much uh, uh, understanding of the way that that organization is running. But I... You know, he, I, the, why would you just throw complete cold water on that when, in fact, you know, these first four or five games, he's been perfect. He's been the perfect fit for them. Yeah, I mean, it, he, he has been, I think, probably. like Think about it. Let's say the, the shoe was on the other foot and, you know, we're watching a Mets team that, that's having. Let's, let's pretend. I'm not saying they're having a bad year now. Let's say we're watching one of these bad years that the Mets have had in the past and they trade away a guy who was underachieving and then goes to a winning team and starts playing well, we would probably be saying, just wait. You know, you're getting a little burst out of him, but just wait. He's not the greatest thing since sliced bread. you got to see over an extended period of time. I mean, maybe that's what he's got more experience in watching him and knowing him. But how so. about this, though? How about having a guy that probably has a very, very, um, I would say, positive feeling about himself, Chisholm the athlete, probably thinks of himself maybe better than some people see him. Yeah. And that's fine because you want confidence. You want you want attitude. You want expectations from the athlete himself, which I kind of feel like he has. It's a very s- small sample size, but I feel like there's an energy about him that could be a little bit off-putting. I could understand that if he were the main guy on a team. Well, also, but he, when he comes here, he's not the main guy on the team. He's not even close to being the main well, guy that's what on I'm, the team. That's what I'm saying. So this may be the best situation for him to flourish. Exactly. And I think that's what it is. It's what the Yankees needed at this time. They needed a guy with a little bit of red ass, a chip on his shoulder. Someone's going to shake things up. And that's what he's done. And Shaking he's, things up. And he's, he's getting he's getting along great with everybody. He's provided that energy. Something we talk about with the Yankees and running the bases and stolen bases. And they never do that. And he's a, is a guy that is a problem when he gets on the base path. So it's it's worked out great so far. But, you know, when... When we're talking about the postseason and the Yankees, this is this is what it's going to come down if, to. Is if, Aaron Judge going to be Aaron Judge? Is John Carlos Stanton going to be flailing at sliders down and away? Is Jazz Chisholm going to be uh, a problem in the clubhouse and throwing his glove down in the dugout and turning into the guy that the Marlins saw? Like, I mean, that's really what the Yankees season is about. Is, are these, is Juan Soto going to have a postseason like he had with the Nationals, or is he going to disappear? That's really what it's about at this point. Now that they've righted the ship... It's can this Yankee team look like this, like they have for the last five games in the playoffs? 100%. And like I've always told you, right now, what are the Yankees doing? What are they doing right now? Peaking too early? No. Oh, I thought no, I mean, they, I, listen, no, first of all. You love a peak too early spot. No, yeah, but no, it's not you a peak too early. You love bringing that up. No, it's not a peak too early. They came out of their malaise, mm-hmm. and now they are what? Stabilized? Winning. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And what is Winning. Oh, winning's the deodorant of champions. Well, there you go. Right. And and when you and when you win, everybody gets along, everybody's happy, everybody is smiling, as opposed to going through the grind like they have the last six weeks. Right. So the, the Yankees also got off the road with dead carcasses to disaster. Right. And now they've they're winning, which is the deodorant of champions. Right. Exactly. So it's all coming together for us. So like you have to understand where I'm coming from and, and understand how I see these things. I yeah, you know what I do? And and that that's what's happening right now with the Yankees. And you know, we sat here for weeks. I even heard Tom Vertucci that was on with BT and Sal from Joe Torrey's golf tournament saying, I don't know how the Yankees turn around with this particular team. I have no idea because this guy stinks, that guy stinks, this guy looks like he's washed up. Well, You've got a combination of things. You've had guys who have been playing poorly, playing better. DJ LeMahieu last night, I don't know if it's going to continue, but... He's got a hot bat all of a sudden. Yeah, he's got a hot bat. Carlos Rodon, a couple of starts in a row, very good. Then you add Chisholm, who comes in, and he's been a revelation for them. John Kohler Stanton has come back. He hasn't been hitting a ton of home runs, but he hasn't been striking out a lot either. So, I mean, they're, they're just they're, they're getting back to who they can be. But it is it is scary that we did see six weeks of horrendous baseball from them, and you just wonder if that's around the corner again. Well, uh, you hope that it isn't. You're hoping that they're, they they came out of that, that malaise and makes you realize that, dare I say it, 
that that Aaron Boone navigated it and, and properly. He was like Magellan in the yeah. way that he handled this whole thing. Bosco da Gama. Yes. Americo Vespucci. <laughs> I can't say Christopher Columbus. They've canceled him, right? Yeah, I can't I, use that anymore. Somebody yeah. has, I guess. Yeah, so, not everybody. Uh, yeah, not some everybody. People. Some people have gotten rid of him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, I, I, you, you kind of have to say that now. Yeah, I mean, but but it also it kind of brings up the point that a lot of people would say with Aaron Boone is like, all right, when the players are playing well, he looks like he knows what he's doing. When they're not, he has no idea what to do. You could say that about <laughs> every manager and every coach. Not I, necessarily. I, I, you know what? I, no, no, no. Not necessarily. I don't see. I don't believe that. I I, I think because I feel like Carlos Mendoza this year in a couple of spots, even when they were down, were doing things and tweaking things. Mm, he was. I, I I understand that, but uh, again, when the players are playing like crap, uh, the manager's gonna gonna hear it because the fans are gonna be disgusted with the way that things look, especially when it's laziness or when there is a mistake that is made a bonehead mistake on the on the base paths when somebody runs through a stop sign at third base or when somebody uh, doesn't cover a base when they should be covering a base or that's somebody cuts i mean that's yeah, the, that, the accountability that, spot but, but all of that stuff happens when you're losing and those are the tough moments for the manager though especially in this city for that team and you know so here we are uh, they're what five in a row now. Yeah, and it, it's like it's that team that we saw the first couple months of the season, and this is a 162 game season. There's going to be a lot of things that go on, and for this team in particular, uh, with all the eyeballs, with all the opinions, with uh, you know, with all the people that cover the team and put you know leak stuff out and. You know, fighting with Brandon yesterday, Brian Cashman. I understand well, that. I look, if fighting I, might be a little strong, I, but, but you know, but pushing st- back, pushing back, or, or standing tall yeah. or standing strong. I, I would do the same thing, and that's what they did in the off season. By the way, mm-hmm. they did the same thing in the off season. Like, hey man, you know, it's not easy to win World Series. We're trying to win every freaking year. We're yeah. spending the money to win. Yeah, Brian Cashman, of course, had that infamous press conference from the. Uh, GM meetings or the winter meetings, whatever it was, where he was cursing and defending the organization. He didn't go that far yesterday, but he did. He did have juice. I mean, there was no doubt about it that you know Brandon even texted uh, this morning already saying how Cashman was was good yesterday, and I heard I heard most of it better than he he usually is. Um, but I mean that that's the thing that gets Brian Cashman is when, and I think that's what got him in the winter and what got him yesterday is this idea that they're not trying hard enough. Which is total BS. You yeah. know, maybe it's because they're not spending as much money as the Dodgers or the Mets. And that's what everybody else is comparing the Yankees to. But how many World Series did the Dodgers have after spending God knows how much yeah, money? Just the COVID season one. Right. It. So, it, you know, a lot of this is dependent, and we see this in every sport. I mean, you, you I guess you could pencil in the Kansas City Chiefs for the. The, the the Super Bowl, assuming that guys stay healthy, yeah, and especially one Patrick Mahomes stays healthy, but again, it's still a long road before you can get there. And I know that uh, Yankee fans get frustrated at times, especially with certain players, and we've talked about those players here incessantly. But they're built to win now. They are, they are, and we all know that. And you can have an All Star at every freaking position. They almost do already. Yeah. I mean, especially now where there are owners that are conscious of the luxury tax. It's not a hard salary cap, but it is very, very, you you can be penalized. Punitive is the word I was looking for. It can be very punitive if you go far past it. And no matter who you are, if you're a Steinbrenner, if you're a Cohen, if you're the the group that owns the Dodgers, they don't, they don't want to deal with that. So, I mean, it, it, you can't, I think, I think some fans forget about that. Because they think that that baseball is no salary cap. You can spend whatever you want. You're in New York. You're the Yankees. You're the Mets. I mean, there's massive, massive money that these guys lose if they go above these thresholds. And let's not forget, as much as we live in the sandbox and the playground and we love sports and we're talking about double plays and home runs and all this stuff, it's a business for these guys. you You know what it's like? You know what it's like for the Yankees or any of these baseball teams when they pierce the luxury tax threshold. Same thing could be said for the NBA when they get into that fourth apron or whatever. How many aprons <laughs> yeah, are there? Yeah. I'm not really sure, but uh, it, it's like buying tickets on StubHub. You buy the tickets, and then you realize there's like 97 uh, different, uh, it feels like, 
There are 97 fees. different fees and taxes and everything right. else associated with it. And then before you know it, what you thought you were spending was 100 bucks. You're spending 135 bucks. Yep. And, and that's exactly what the luxury tax and what that apron thing in the NBA is and the penalties that are associated with it. For are, competitive balance. For competitive balance. And, you know, no owner in their right mind, maybe unless, of course, you're the Dodgers, wants to incur that type of that cost when, when you shouldn't you shouldn't have to. Right. If your baseball people are good, you shouldn't have to do that. Exactly. I mean, and that's what we've seen from a lot of these different teams that maybe not winning, but, you know, the Rays are always in the mix. You see the Diamondbacks last year in the mix. And they're in the mix again this year. Right. I mean, the Houston Astros bottomed out and then and built themselves back up with their own players and then couldn't keep everybody, but they kept most of them. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that that's the way to do it more than just buying everybody. Yeah, but I mean, so you just put yourself in their situation. Do, do you want to spend like an extra thirty five million dollars that you don't have to spend? No, it's, it's a penalty. Of course. You know, and nobody wants to pay a penalty, especially when you're I mean, we're not looking at the bottom line. We're not looking at the money that they're making or losing. I mean, this is you know, I know Steve Cohen says it's really you know, he's he's losing money. And we talk about how he puts everything through the Mets and it's there's tax breaks and all of these things. But at the same time, if you're an owner, you don't want to lose money every it's year. It's also right, exactly. He also has an asset that's yeah. worth a couple billion dollars. Sure, so right. it's an asset as well, and you know, I'm sure he enjoys that. And you know, interesting going to City Field. You saw what's going on around that. Mm-hmm. He got related over there. Now they're starting yeah. to build different things, and it's going to be more than just baseball. And it looks like, I don't know if I read this. I think I read this. It sounds like that Sands Casino is coming to Nassau County. See, I don't know yet. I did. I, I thought it was going to be still another year or so before they decided that. All right. So that means, you're saying that they got one of the downstate licenses? I I, I don't know. That I would thought, have been big news. I, I I thought I read that, but I'm just if they if they do, that means there's two downstate licenses still available, and who's getting those? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. That that and that is a huge. And that deal. is huge for Steve Cohen and the Mets. Yep. And that's the one I re- I actually of all of them, that's the one I like the best. Well, that's because you don't live there. The people that live there don't like it. Damn right, I don't live there. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> people but it in that sounds area. great, man. You slap a casino next to City Field and restaurants and hotels, man. I'm in. I mean, I I, I, would... I mean, we we feel like okay, you know, that City Field that's over by LaGuardia, but there are people that live in that community that don't want it. Just like people in Nassau County don't want the Sands. Right. So I just go to move to Delaware, like everybody else is doing. Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. 